All right, boys, we got a pretty interesting one today. It's a 16 inch SPR barrel from Sons of Liberty Gunworks. First, we'll take a look at the specs, then do a more thorough look at things on the bench, and then head to the range to shoot some 30 shot groups and see how it does. Okay, so this is the Sons of Liberty Gunworks Precision SPR grade barrel. I believe they came out with the spec not too terribly long ago. I think late 2023 or early 2024. But anyway, I purchased this barrel in November of 2024 with my own money. I'll also mention that all the ammunition and equipment in this video was paid for by me, so any bias in the results should be minimal. Anyway, this barrel has a few unique features. Uh, first, it has three groove polygonal rifling, so the bore scope footage looks a little bit different. And second, the barrel has 5 8 by 24 threads, which you'll usually find on a 308 or 65 Creedmoor or something like that. AR-15s usually have half by 28 threads. Those are the two most unique features about this barrel. Uh, the next thing that grabbed my attention was the weight of this thing. It's pretty thick and heavy, coming in at just over 37 ounces, which is just about half a pound heavier than a government profile barrel. The barrel is 16 inches, made from 416R stainless steel with a 223 wild chamber, 1-7 twist, and mid-length gas. The gas port is very conservatively sized at 74 thousandths, and the barrel uses a black oxide coating. Next up, we'll take a closer look at the barrel here on the bench before we head to the range. First, we'll check out the throaty Rosen gauge to see where this barrel is starting out at, and the barrel gauge is at a 1, which is normal. And next, we'll take a look through the bore scope. The bore scope footage was taken as the barrel came fresh out of the box before I cleaned it, and as mentioned earlier, the barrel has a black oxide coating, so the bore scope footage is a bit dark and kind of hard to get a good look at things, but we'll see what we can see. Here's a look at the throat, which looks good enough to me. It doesn't look like there's anything obviously out of place or anything and as we move towards the muzzle we can get a look at the three groove polygonal rifling which looks a bit different but again everything looks fine to me due to the black coating it's a bit tricky to look at the details and here we are at the gas port and it looks like there's a little bit of a burr on there but that's nothing abnormal and here we are coming up to the crown which looks like it has a straight cut without a chamfer but it looks like a nice clean cut and should do just fine okay time for something new i recently got a micrometer so we're going to check a few things out here here's a gas block channel diameter which you would want to be as close close to 750 thousandths as possible to provide a tight seal with the gas block. And at this point, I haven't miked too many barrels, but I can tell you that less than half thousandths from max diameter seems pretty impressive to me. And here is the barrel extension, which most people would probably want on the larger end of the spec. And again, impressive. I'll also mention that subjectively, the gas block and upper receiver fit felt very snug. All right, next we'll go over the setup and then head to the range. The barrel was fit into an upper receiver. After greasing the threads, the barrel nut was torqued to 40 foot-pounds. The barrel was cleaned prior to this range trip. The hand guard is free-floated. No muzzle device is used to prevent possible interference. A 3-inch bag rider with short mounting screws is used to fit the front rest. An A5 receiver extension is installed with an A5-0 buffer and Springco green spring. The trigger is a Geisley two-stage super dynamic three-gun trigger. A few rounds were fired prior to shooting the first group to foul the bore and zero the scope. The scope is a vortex fiber, 6.5 to 20 by 44. Scope mount torque was confirmed at 6 inch pounds and scope ring torque was confirmed at 15 inch pounds. Magnification is set at 20 and parallax was set and confirmed with a head nod test. The barrel will be cooled with a chamber chiller between each group. A chronograph will capture the velocity of each shot. A Mantis X10 Elite is mounted to the front of the handguard. This is an accelerometer that will grade each shot based on how steady the rifle was at the moment of firing and the groups will be measured by the Ballistic X app. I'll be shooting 30 shots per group. All 30 shots will be fired consecutively over about four minutes. This will help me determine how well the barrel will perform in the match or practical type scenario where the barrel might get some heat into it. All groups will be fired at 100 yards. The point of aim is a small circle at the bottom of the target with the point of intact set a few inches above it to preserve the aiming point. The rifle will be shot from the prone with a front rest and rear bag. Wind will be monitored with a ribbon. Each group will take about four minutes to shoot and will be edited down to about 15 seconds. Today I'll be shooting three groups. We'll start off with PMC Bronze 55 grain FMJ and then we have Hornady 73 grain ELD match and last we'll finish up with some Burger 77 grain OTM. All right let's do it. All right for the first group of the day we have 55 grain PMC Bronze. One reason why I picked this load was because I wanted to see how it would cycle with the tight gas port on this barrel and I was kind of surprised that it didn't have any malfunctions but it did feel like I was on the verge of short stroking so I was quite surprised when it actually locked back on an empty mag. Uh, anyway the shooting felt fine on my end and the wind was calm. All shots were recorded on the Chrono and the Mantis so we will finish up with this group and then take a closer look. All right, so 55 grain PMC bronze out of the Sun's SBR barrel. We had an average velocity of 2695 with an impressively bad SD of 54 and extreme spread of 234. So these are uh, these are these are pretty bad numbers. Um, and the rifle stability score 99.5. That's about how how well I've been shooting lately. So that's about average for me. The group size is 3.386 MOA with a mean radius of 1.022 MOA, which is not great. Uh, not that PMC 
bronze usually shoots pretty good, but usually shoots a little bit better than this. So these numbers aren't too unexpected, but I've seen better. And if we look at the group, it's a little bit taller than it is wide. So we'll take a look at a couple of the high and low shots at number four, 29, and 13, and see what we can see here. So starting, starting with shot number four, the velocity was a little bit above average, and the rifle stability was about average. And then going down to shot number 29, the velocity was, again, above average, and then Rifle stability was 99.4, so about average. And then shot number 13 was, uh, velocity was again above average with an average uh, rifle stability score. So I think that's about what we got. We'll check out the velocity highs and lows just because. The lowest velocity shot was shot number three, which is right here. And the highest velocity shot was shot number 15, which is right next to it right here. And we'll check out my worst shot according to the uh, according to the Mantis, which is shot number two. And shot number two landed right there, so not too uh, far away from the middle of the group. All right, and here is the 30 strike group broken down into six five shot groups and also into three ten shot groups. So if you break the group down into five shot groups, we had a low of 1.5 MOA with an average five shot groups of 2.3 MOA. And if you break it down into ten shot groups, we have the smallest ten shot group was 2.6 MOA with an average ten shot group size of 2.8 MOA. So not a great result to start out with. Next up, we'll try the 73 grain in Hornady. For the second group of the day, we have Hornady 73 grain ELD match. This load usually shoots pretty good for me. The ejection looked pretty consistent between three and four o'clock and recoil felt fine, not as soft as the PMC bronze, but the bolt velocity felt like it was running at a good pace to be pretty soft, but not risking short stroking. Basically no win for this group. All the shooting felt fine on my end. The chrono captured all the velocity data, and I think the Mantis only missed one shot. So we will finish up this group and then take a closer look at the numbers. Okay, so this is a group from the uh, 73 gram Hornady. We had an average velocity of 24.32 with an SD of 27 and an ES of 116, and an average rifle stability score of 99.5. And then we ended up with a group size of 1.263 MOA, MOA with a mean radius in the twos of 0 0.299 MOA. So yeah, this is uh, this is really impressive. So yeah, not a whole lot to look at here. I guess we'll look at not shots number 13 and 14, but uh, this is a this is a pretty good looking group. So shot number 13 up here had a velocity on the lower side and a stability score of 99.4. And then shot number 14 uh, also had the lowest velocity of the bunch and a stability score in the middle of 99.6. And then my worst shot, according to the Mantis, was shot number three, which is, I don't know, somewhere in there. But uh, yeah, wow, this is pretty good. All right, and if we break the uh, Hornady group down into five shot and 10 shot groups, the smallest five shot group was 0 0.4 MOA, with an average of five shot group size of 0 0.8 MOA. And then if we break things down into 10 shot groups, we did have two 10 shot groups that were sub MOA, with an average 10 shot group size of 1.0 MOA. So this is gonna be very hard to beat, uh, but next up we have the 77 grain burger, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so the last group of the day is with the 77 grain burgers. We'll see if this barrel is able to put up another excellent group. This load usually produces some pretty decently high velocities as well. And and the 1 to 7 twist rate should match up pretty well with the uh, with the bullet. The ejection was very consistent at about 3.30. Recoil and bolt velocity felt fine. The chronograph recorded all shots, and the Mantis only dropped one shot. And yeah, things look pretty good. So we will close out this group and then go over the numbers. Okay, here's a look at the 77 grain burgers. We had an average velocity of 25.72 with an SD of 20 and an ES of 69, and an average stability scored in 99.5, which is about my average. So pretty good velocity numbers and average uh, stability score. And for the group, we had a group size of 1.319 MOA with a mean radius of 0 0.320 MOA, which is another really good group. Although to start things out out of the gate, I uh, kind of shanked shot number one. I was thinking about restarting the group, but I just kind of went with it. But if you want to know what it looks like without uh, shot number one, the group size would have been would have gone down by about a tenth to a 1.250 MOA and the mean radius down to 0.304 MOA. So not a huge difference difference without that shot. So we're gonna we're gonna keep it in and it's still a, a really good looking group. And we'll take a, a look at shot number one and 14. So shot number one had a velocity that was a little bit below average and then the rifle stability was 98.8 and that was a called bad shot by me. Not that it was super far off, but far enough. And then shot number 14 had a below average velocity and in uh, a good uh, rifle stability score 99.7 so another really good group with the Suns SPR barrel and here is the burger group broken down into six five shot groups and three ten shot groups and we got another sub half MOA five shot group with the burgers at 0 0.4 and an average five shot group size of 0 0.9 MOA and we break it down into ten shot groups we had a seven way ten shot group with the smallest being 0 0.9 MOA and the average ten shot group size being 1.1 MOA uh, so again very good performance out of the uh, Suns SPR barrel and next up we'll look at the overall results. Before we get to the overall results, I want to thank you for watching my content. And if you have enjoyed the video and found it useful, it would help me out a lot if you could support the channel with a $2 super thanks so that I can buy more ammo and equipment to bring you more content like this. Thanks again for watching.
let's get back to it. Okay, so here's a look at the overall results. Before we go over the numbers, I'm going to touch on something real quick. In my last video with the Geisley Barrel, I introduced this new metric. The idea was to come up with something that didn't take a whole lot of mathing and would put things in a more practical context so that it would be easier for me to understand how mean radius relates to actually shooting stuff. So the idea that I came up with was to calculate the max distance where the group would still fit inside a USPSA A zone, which is 5.91 inches wide and 11.02 inches tall. Anyway, I've made a few tweaks to it, starting with the name. I'm going with the A zone equivalence distance, or AZ for short, since everyone likes acronyms. And since some of you are probably new here, I'll show you how you go about getting this number. So we get the mean radius with, from our 30 shot group at 100 yards, then multiply the mean radius by our multiplier, which is somewhere between three and four. I was using 3.5 as a multiplier, but now I'm going with four. I'll explain why at the end of this video. Anyway, we end up with our new theoretical extreme spread. And from here, we calculate the distance in yards, where this number will equal 5.91 inches, which is a width of a USPSA A zone. For example, with the Hornady group, we have a mean radius of 0.299 MOA. So you multiply that by four to get 1.20 MOA. And we then calculate the distance where 1.2 MOA would be 5.91 inches. And we come up with the answer of 472 yards. So if you had no wind, perfect dope, and a perfect zero, and shot the same 1.20 MOA group at 472 yards, the group would fit inside a uh, USPSA A zone. Uh, that's the short version of it. I'm gonna go over it in more detail at the end of the video because I'm sure half of you are probably asleep by now. So let's get back to it. We started off with a not so great group with the PMC Bronze. Not that I expect this ammo to group very well, but even then compared to other barrels that I've shot, the PMC Bronze and the Suns barrel did not really get along. But since this is an SPR barrel, you're probably not gonna be feeding it PMC Bronze too often. But of course your use may vary. Uh, moving on to the two match loads, the Hornady and Burger had a pretty similar performance, with the Hornady group just edging out the Burgers, with the mean radius at 0.299 MOA, and the Burgers coming in at 0.320 MOA. And if we look at the AZ scores, they're able to reach out to 441 yards and 472 yards. And we can compare that to the mean radius of the PMC Bronze, which is 1.022 MOA, and that ended up with an AZ score of only 138 yards. So that's quite a big difference between the performance of the match loads versus the uh, the, the both FMJ load. All right, so let's see how this barrel checks up to the others that I've tested so far. All right, so here is the current leaderboard. And yeah, the Suns SPR barrel absolutely dominated every other barrel on here by a lot. So the Suns barrel had a mean radius in the 0.2s and the closest one was the Roscoe at 0.443 MOA. And if you look at the AZ scores, the Suns barrel is out in front by over 100, by over 150 yards, which is quite a bit. Uh, but of course, this is a sample size of one and your barrel may vary. And of course, all these barrels may shoot a little bit differently with different ammo or different shooter or different weather or different whatever. But these were the results that I was able to get. Although admittedly, all these all these barrels could probably do at least a little bit better with a perfect shooter. But uh, yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think of this barrel. Is it something that you would consider or do you think it's too heavy? Or what's a different barrel that you think would do better? Uh, anyway, we're going to go ahead and dive into the AZ score a little bit further. Okay, so let's talk about the AZ. What is it and why is it the way that it is? I'll briefly touch on a few things I said earlier and then go a little bit deeper. So my idea with the AZ was to come up with a metric that made it easier for me to relate the performance of the 30 shot 100 yard groups to real world performance. I also wanted the level of math to be accessible and easy and avoid the complexities of an actual hit probability calculator since those things get ridiculously complicated. So with that, I think the AZ gives me a better understanding of the practical performance than just looking at the raw extreme spread or mean radius numbers while not being overly complicated. For me, it's hard to make sense of the raw mean radius numbers, um, other than I know that smaller is better. But past that, it's kind of hard for me to put those numbers to use. One common piece of feedback that I got about the AZ score from the last video uh, was to do the same equation for a C zone or make a CZ score. This touches on a lot of things, so we're gonna explore this for a bit. So the short answer is, I don't want to do a CZ score because the ranges are gonna be too long. And in my opinion, it's gonna give you a false impression of the actual capabilities of your rifle. The longer the distance you're shooting, or technically the longer the bullet stays in the air, other variables come into play and have an effect on if your bullet goes where you want it to go. Uh, one of those variables is the variation in velocity. If you're shooting at 100 yards, you can have a pretty huge spread in your velocity and it won't really affect your group size much. Your group is still gonna end up fairly circular around. Once you start shooting out past, you know, four or five, 600 yards or so, depending on your velocity variation and other variables, your group is gonna get proportionally taller than it is wide. So basically you'll end up with a tall oval instead of a circle. This is one of the reasons why I chose the USPSA A zone. Since the A zone is basically twice as tall as it is wide, it gives me some extra wiggle room so that mostly I can ignore velocity SDs and keep the math uh, a lot more simple. With the C zone, the height and width measurements aren't as far apart. And also it's a larger target in general, which will push the distances out further, which will compound the problem. 
And if I wanted to be more correct, I would either have to make the math a lot more complicated, which I'm not smart enough to do, or I would have to add some additional assumptions, like the CZ score is only valid for ammo with SDs less than 10 or something like that. So I think the AZ score is already making enough assumptions. So I didn't really want to add one more and make things even more optimistic. But for those of you who are still curious, if you wanted to calculate a CZ score, you would basically just double the AZ score. The A zone is 5.91 inches wide, and the C zone is 11.8 inches wide. And then the C zone height depends on if you want to include the head or not. But again, I don't really feel good about putting out these numbers because you would need low single digit SDs to make high percentage hits at these sorts of ranges. So the CZ score would be a very, very optimistic number. I mean, if you wanted to, I guess you could say that the barrel has the potential to get high percentage hits at these ranges on a C zone, but it would depend on the ammo and environmentals as to if you would actually see that in real world performance. And really, at these distances, velocity variation is just one of the additional variables to worry about. You also have bullet BC and BC variation, as well as the environmental conditions that will affect the time of flight of the bullet, as well as a bunch of other stuff that makes my brain hurt thinking about it. But anyway, the main point is that once you start to push distances out a little bit further, predicting hits becomes a lot more complicated really fast. And that's just more math than what I really want to get into. So that's a long version of why I'll stick with the A zone. It just keeps the distances shorter and makes the math a lot easier. Oh yeah, and that is why I changed the multiplier from three and a half to four. Again, it just intentionally reduces the ranges to avoid more difficult math. Or you could say that it accounts for some real world slop and just adds a bit of a buffer. Of course, you can choose to use whatever multiplier you want to, but once you start to reach out past four or 500 yards, other variables come into play that the AZ score just isn't meant to deal with. Anyway, feel free to give me some feedback in the comments. You guys have been very helpful with this, and I appreciate that. If you guys like the AZ score and I keep using it for a while, I might make a dedicated video on it, but I think I'll leave it here for now and see how you guys react to it. Anyway, that'll do it for now. Later.